Hi guys and welcome to Design Fundamentals Typography Basics. I'm Ben Gribbin and today we're going to learn all about typefaces, fonts and typeface anatomy. So typography, what is it? Well, put simply, it's the art and technique of arranging type to convey information. It involves a whole host of elements such as typeface selection, tracking, leading, kerning, justification, hierarchy. But many people confuse typography with something called type design and that isn't the same thing. Type design is the art of physically designing the typefaces or fonts that are used. Some typographers may well design font families as well but if you're simply doing um, arranging of text uh, to make it legible and attractive that is typography. In essence you could think of type designers are to typographers as brick makers, brick makers are to bricklayers. But it's actually something that people think about every day without really realizing since we've had uh, desktop publishing really take off in popularity typography is in front of people in our everyday lives in email programs and Microsoft Word etc but without the lack or, or with a lack of proper terminology and labeling and not very much structure so as you can probably or you may have noticed so far we've been calling things a typeface and often a typeface is actually confused with a font but you, you should really use the word typeface you, typically in place of the word font. Now a typeface is basically a collection of fonts or a font family and again thanks to desktop publishing the term font has often been incorrectly used and people believe that Helvetica is a font for example but it's actually a typeface or a collection of fonts that have the same theme, the same look. So for example Helvetica bold or italicized is actually a font in its own right but Helvetica as a whole is a typeface. So now we've discussed what a typeface is let's have a look at typeface classification. Okay and you can see we've got six typefaces here um, these have all got their own very separate typeface classifications and we're going to go through what those are but essentially Typeface classification is a very simple and easy way of labeling a collection of typefaces uh, that have similar properties. So for example here we have a serif font here on the upper left. Now you can tell that's a serif font because it's got these little flares down at the bottom. We've highlighted those just so you can see them. But that's a real traditional sort of old school font. Next up we have a sans serif font. Now this is a Helvetica um, typeface and I think it's Helvetica bold. Now that has no serifs, it's called sans serif because sans in Latin I believe means without or none, so it has no serifs, it's quite a modern uh, clean font. Next up we have a monospaced font. Now this is called monospaced because every character or glyph is the same width. Now to prove that we've used this little marker down here, that is the exact same length on both of those, so no matter whether it's a capital um, or a lowercase letter in that typeface it's going to be the same width and those are typically used on uh, coding programs that kind of thing. Lower left we've got a symbol font um, so that's like dingbats, windings and that's just a collection of symbols um, there's quite a few of those fonts and typefaces around. Then we have a classical typeface and that's sort of your sort of real classical elegant script type uh, fonts and those are typically used on like wedding invitations and anywhere that luxury is wanted to be conveyed. And then finally we've got a slab serif font and I think that one's um, the Museo or Museo typeface. I, can't, I don't know which font it is within that collection but that's got these real chunky modern blocky serifs on as opposed to your old flared kind of serifs and it's also not got this detailing up here it's more of a basically it looks very similar to Helvetica except with these chunky modern serifs on the bottom but you know there are several um, typefaces in fact I think there's two dozen official sort of typeface collection uh, classifications and you can find those all on a, an Adobe site which we've displayed the link to there if you check that out that's got all of them listed and there's there's other ones including like ornamental, novelty, mimicry, black letter or gothic 
Gaelic symbol as we've just looked at. There's literally ha two dozen, so that website's very good just for being able to look briefly over them all. Now we're going to look at typeface anatomy, and it sounds quite complicated, but actually it's not. We're going to go through this word here. You can see we've labelled it up with lots of uh, proper terminology, and we're going to consider each one, and we'll talk about why it's called that and what it means to you. So let's start off with the X height. Now we haven't got X height labelled on here, but we've, we've picked it first because it helps us explain what the baseline and mean line is. The X height is generally the height of a lowercase x in this typeface. Um, so you, you can also use u, v, w and z, but generally it's the X height and it's the distance between the baseline and the mean line set by the X. Now he's, we've just mentioned the baseline, so let's talk about what that is. The baseline is the line upon which most of the letters are sitting on. You can see that there. Um, you've got all, pretty much all of them sitting pretty pretty much bang on with that baseline. It's also the line from which uh, descenders are measured. So you can see here this descender, this descender uh, is measured from the baseline. Now we've mentioned the mean line, that's just sort of your average midline, the general height of most of the lowercase fonts. Um, and that's also the line from which ascenders are men uh, measured. So we've mentioned ascenders and descenders. Let's talk about what those are. Now, this is an ascender here. We've labeled it up. This is the height of the ascender. And essentially, all an ascender is, it's a portion of a letter that goes above the mean line or the X height. Um, typically, it's a lowercase letter. So this H has, have, has one. Uh, let's think of another one that has. A K has got one. Um, L would raise above the mean line and have an ascender. So conversely, we've got a descender. Now, there's one there on that Y, but it's also called a tail, which we'll talk about shortly. So let's consider this P, that's a descender because it's a portion of the letter that goes below the baseline. Now we've got a nice and easy one, it's the stem. And the stem is literally just a vertical stroke of a letter. So you can see there, a nice vertical stroke We've got one there, we've got one there, one there, one there, and those are just called stems. Nice and easy. Think of it a bit like a flower stem. You can see we've got terminal lined up there, and that is just the end of uh, a straight or curved stroke that doesn't have a serif. So it's just the end of a, a letter, basically. You've got one there. That would be one if it didn't have a serif. Now, ball and counter. We don't actually have ball labelled up, but we have counter there. The space inside of a letter is called a counter um, or a ball. Now, there's a slight difference in them. Most experts say that a ball is a, a curved enclosed space. So, like you see in this O or the one in the G there. And a counter is just a, an enclosed or partially enclosed space within a symbol or glyph. So counters are in characters like capital A is a good example because a capital A is pointed, it actually goes above um, even the cap and the sender right sometimes. And that's got a real triangular pointed counter in there. It's not a bowl shape, which is circular. So that's a bowl, that's a counter. Um, it doesn't even have to be entirely enclosed now that could technically be a counter because it's a semi enclosed space and you have got counters in things like b's d's e's g's and funnily enough mentioning an e it has what technically would be a counter but it's called an i for some reason the enclosed space in a lowercase e is called an i now we've got a shoulder and a shoulder is just the curve um, at the beginning of a character so um an M has a shoulder. Think of it literally like a body part. It's a, a piece that like extrudes from uh, a stem. So that's a shoulder there. It's just the start of a curve moving away from a letter. We have a serif labeled up over here. Serifs, very simply, are just semi-structural details on some of the words, uh, on some of the letters, sorry. Uh, basically just strokes that make up uh, the kind of unique look of a typeface they give it a real unique identification we've got a tail now we haven't mentioned it we haven't labeled it up but basically it's a, a descender that's 
a decorative stroke. So on a cue, you've got a descent, uh, a tail. Sorry, it's like a an embellishment, nice little flick coming off the the cue. Uh, you've also got them in K's, the one that comes down, or in an I, in a capital I, you've got a tail, just a, a decorative stroke. Link or neck, we've labelled that up here, and basically a link or neck is best shown in this double story G. A link is a small, usually curved stroke that connects a bow, which we've got up here, and a loop. And we've mentioned loop, so we've labelled the loop down here. A loop is again um, an enclosed or partially enclosed counter, so a non-circular a non enclosed space that's below uh, the baseline. So in your lowercase g is the best example of that. So to round up today we've looked at the very basics of typography covering things like loops, descenders, typeface classification, font face, uh, typeface anatomy. Basically we've covered how fonts are constructed. Now your assignment is to work on learning the terminology in this lesson as we'll be using it in our next whilst working on your next design call each adjustment by its its proper technical name think about whether you're using uh, a serif or an ear uh, a stem that kind of thing just when you're working with text just think about what they're called and that will help you learn the technical terms Next time on Design Fundamentals, we're going to cover typography application. Thanks for listening.